purpose of today's discussion now is to talk about the pushing exercise, why it's relevant to living with a dog and dog training. So dealing with resistance is the number one problem that any organism evolved to solve in the evolution of its life and how it makes its living and how it survives predation and, and anything germane to existence always involves resistance, overcoming resistance. There's always resistance between a dog and whatever it wants. So you have to overcome resistance. Even if there's a $20 bill on the floor, I gotta bend over and pick it up. It takes work to get it. If you're gonna eat an apple, you gotta pick it, you have to crunch it, swallow it, and then your body has to do the physiological work of digestion and transporting energy to the cells. And the closest thing to no resistance would be getting an IV of sugar water. Uh, we almost, you don't even have to digest anything. It goes right to the blood in the cells and then they can do work. But you can see how minimal the absence of resistance is. So everything involves resistance. So this pushing exercise is different from counter conditioning or uh, desensitizing because it is the counter to a distraction. Whereas counter conditioning is not necessarily going to counter a dis the attractive value of a distraction. So we can just quantify things. If we were to say that this stimulus is worth 200 volts, if you will, of excitatory power, and in order for this animal to return, the dog to return to neutral, the goal of all behavior is to return to neutral. That's how the dog knows he's accomplished the goal and it's where the feeling of success comes from. So if, we, if this is a deer, for example, and a dog is super attracted to that deer, and let's just for the purpose of illustration say it's worth 200 volts, maximum stimulation. For him to return to neutral, he has to overcome 200 volts worth of resistance. He has to do 200 volts worth of work. So this is why dogs chase deer all day is they're trying to dissipate that input. And they run and run and run until they're exhausted that amount of input. It's like if you step on the gas pedal in your car, you put 200 volts, if you will, of energy into the system. And when you take your foot off the gas, the car doesn't just stop. It keeps rolling until the resistance it encounters returns it to neutral and the car knows stop. And the system is back in balance. So the problem with if I ask a dog to sit for a cookie, well, that, that may only be worth, if that, 50 volts worth of work. So the dog's still left with 150 volts shortfall. Pushing, on the other hand, can absorb all that work and we offer 200 volts worth of resistance and the dog overcomes it. Now why would pushing for food be more satisfying than sitting for the food? Because what dogs are really looking for is resistance overcoming resistance. That's their definition of pleasure. It's like children. When you raise kids, they get good at something. They want to challenge themselves. They're constantly increasing the resistance of whatever it is so that they get more pleasure out of that activity. And then after a while, overcoming the obstacles of resistance becomes a satisfaction. And dealing with it becomes a satisfaction independent of whether you win or lose. It doesn't matter. It's the actual striving to accomplish a goal in, in, in the face of a challenge that's satisfying. So currently behaviorism is saying the pursuit of pleasure and the avoidance of pain 
and then whatever instinctive mandates are out there. That, that explains behavior. And it's completely missing the resistance thing. So this is different than counter conditioning because the counter behavior may not counter the excitatory, excitatory energy that the stimulus in, impresses upon the organism. And it's different from desensitization because when a dog likes resistance and feels accomplished with resistance, he becomes aroused and sensual. And sensual is the basis of impulse control. It's what, it's what allows a wild animal to know when to go, when not to go, rather than just being on a knee-jerk reaction. It gives them a faculty of discrimination. So the dog becomes sensual to an intense situation that normally made him brittle and hypermanic and uh, even uh, dangerously aggressive. So we change his body state from hypermanic and sensitive and intense to soft and supple. And in that state, he can learn new things. So it's fundamentally different from that. It's also fundamentally different from bat training, which is keeping the dog under threshold, helping him feel safe, theoretically. And then he, from that platform, he feels more adventurous to explore something isn't as scary as it used to be, which sounds reasonable in theory, but many dogs are so damaged or they're always over threshold that you really, it doesn't get a toehold in the system. Whereas changing the dog's relationship to resistance through the pushing exercise changes his relationship to everything because resistance is a common denominator to all experience, all perceptual states, and all learning resolutions. So uh, in the next lecture or next video, we'll demonstrate the pushing and show some of the power of it vis-a-vis -vis other things. So uh, I think that sums it up.